Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo was a Mexican painter who was inspired by Mexican culture. She was famous for her self-portraits and for uh, showing us and exploring uh, how Mexico lives and the culture of Mexico. And this came after there was a great revolution in Mexico and everyone was trying to de uh, define what it was to be Mexican again. And uh, she had uh, put lots about her own life in her paintings and uh, her, she kind of led a bit of a tragic life. Uh, she was married to another famous painter. His name was Diego Rivera. And he too was Mexican and was also exploring the culture of Mexico in his paintings. Uh, she was, uh, grew up not thinking that she was going to be a painter. She actually was wanted to go to medical school. And, uh, but she had a tragic accident when she was 18. There was, she was on a bus with a friend and there was a big accident and uh, many people lost their lives and uh, she was severely injured. She had broke her back and there were, I don't know, numerous problems with her back. She had uh, internal injuries and it took her three months to recover, at least enough so she could go out of her house. And, but she never fully recovered. She was always in a, a brace around her middle and trying to keep her back upright and her back was never the same again. And because of that, she decided she couldn't go to medical school any longer. And while she was recovering in bed, which took about a good three to four months, she was just laying in bed in a cast. And she figured out how to build an easel so she could paint again and picked up kind of her childhood interest of painting. She also uh, put a mirror up above her and figured out how to do her own portraits while she was painting in bed. And that was what inspired her to become an artist. She originally thought she was going to uh, become a medical illustrator, but that didn't, uh, th she did such a good job with her own portraits that again, she was encouraged to become a real a painter, and not a real painter, but a painter, and do it as a, uh, as a job. So she uh, became more and more popular with other artists and went to France and the United States to uh, do shows and show her work and got lots of interest. Uh, the Louvre bought one of her paintings and she became the first Mexican artist to be uh, uh, have a painting purchased by the Louvre, which was a big deal. And that was back in uh, the 1930s or uh, that they had purchased that. And actually, I'm sorry, the 1940s. And she also worked as an art teacher, which I think is awesome because of course, that's what I am. Uh, the painting that the Louvre bought was called The Frame, and I show it to you here. And uh, while she was getting all of this recognition in Mexico and France and in the United States, though her health was declining, and she ended up having lots of surgeries, wheelchair bound, uh, bed bedridden, and uh, she continued doing her art from her bed. And uh, during this, she would uh, do lots of self-portraits again. And uh, her, many of these, the paintings that she did at this time are her most popular. One is Broken Column is what the title of it is. And it shows her in a, uh, uh, like a, uh, oh golly. It uh, shows her in a, a kind of a brace. And uh, the other one is Without Hope. So you can kind of see where her mind was at this time. The other one was Tree of Hope. And a tree symbolizes, you know, being able to grow out of something or grow up into something. Um, and Stand Fast and the Wounded Deer, which is one of my favorites of hers. Uh, she also um, was confined to her house, Casa Azul, which was her family home. And... Casa Azul, which means blue house, uh, was her family home and today is the Frida Kahlo Museum, 
which they have opened up and um, you can now video tour through it. And I will post the link on in the description page as well. And um, it's really cool. It's got, you know, like the arrows where you can point to which direction you want to go in the, in the house. Uh, she uh, has all of the Casa Azul was, has been maintained as though it was her house as, when she passed away. Then, and it shows all of her clothing, it shows her wheelchair, it shows all the things, the items that were in her house at the time. <clears throat> and also, when we're done with this shelter in place, the de Young Museum has borrowed many of the items, her clothing that uh, inspired her Mexican her heritage, her clothing, and um, many of the things that came from Casa Azul will be open at the de Young Museum once they open for business again. So you could do that as well. And one side of note, which is kind of fun, uh, she also did a lot of uh, paintings with animals in it. And uh, one of the things that was featured a lot in her paintings were monkeys. And she had pet monkeys in her garden, which I think is kind of fun. And she called these monkeys her children. And they, she, in her self-portraits, she has them sitting on her shoulders and she's holding them. And, and they were her children because she was unable to have children of her own because of her injuries. So Frida Kahlo was a really interesting um, Mexicana and um, is very important in our art world. She was considered a surrealist too. And she didn't like that. A surrealist is someone who paints things that are dreamlike or look like they came from a dream. And we'll talk more about that next time we meet because uh, we're gonna uh, talk about somebody else who was truly a surrealist. Uh, they also called her a magical realist, which I think is maybe a little better because she was showing the realistic side of her life, but um, it was kind of magical in that she showed herself as animals or she showed herself, um, uh, she had a lot of magic around her. Let's see, how can I, how can I put that? Because she had, uh, there's one famous painting where she has, it's two of her, and one is uh, her and shows both of her with a heart. And one of them, and they both go to each other, I should show, say, too. Because, so, it, so it shows that it's two sides of her. So that's kind of magical in that there were two people. And also a lot of her animals feel like they're kind of magical as well. So that's a little bit about Frida Kahlo. Um, oh, actually, I should tell you a little bit more. Uh, she died quite young, the other injuries, uh, ultimately. And she was 47 when she died, which is quite young, in 1954. And it took another 25 years for many people to understand who she was and to appreciate her art as well. She, um, and so it wasn't until the 1970s when uh, kind of the, for lack of a better word, the women's movement started where we talked about how women should have equal pay and uh, should have equal rights and kind of empowering women to be uh, strong people. And, and she kind of uh, was a symbol for that movement. And ever since then, she's been very popular. So our art project for this uh, lesson with Frida Kahlo is going to be uh, using something that I thought might be kind of interesting for you. And we have are talking a lot about uh, toilet paper these days because and the lack thereof. So I've been saving my toilet paper rolls knowing that they were going to come in handy and this is the time when they're going to come in handy. And um, so your supplies for today are going to be uh, you're going to start out with the base of a toilet paper roll. You're going to need some white paper as well uh, in order to do the details on it because we are going to do a Frida Kahlo doll, okay, May using the base of a toilet paper roll. Now you can see she's not quite finished here. I've got my uh, face with um, in white paper and you're gonna do your faces, and it doesn't, you don't need to make a Frida Kahlo doll. I decided to make a Frida Kahlo doll. You can make a doll of whatever, 
or uh, whatever character you decide you want to make a doll out of. But I'm going to use her as an example and I'm also going to show you an animal. Okay. Uh, so start with, like I said, a base of white paper. You need to think about a couple of things. One is um, her hair and I hair and clothes if you're going to do a person and a face, right? So her hair, I started with her with black paper, construction paper. And all I did was cut strips of paper. And you can see they're nice and curled, aren't they? Well, they're nice and curled because I wrapped it around my pencil and held it down in place for a couple of minutes and that curls it. Paper is very uh, malleable, if, if for lack of a better word. Malleable means it can be moved and changed very easily. So I curled a lot of this paper and then I glued it down into the inside edge there, okay? And she now has pretty nice hairdo. Now I also went into my garden and got some flowers because she always had flowers and ribbon in her hair as well. So my Frida here is going to have some flowers in her hair. And I gave her some earrings and I brought the hair down a little bit. I glued one little piece so it looked like it was on the was kind of falling down across her forehead. Now she's known for her unibrow, okay, for and the, I'm sure some of you are giggling out there, but she uh, was very a very natural woman. She didn't try to wear too much makeup. She didn't uh, dress up too much. She just decided she was going to be what she was going to be. And I'm sure some of that maybe was because she was um, injured a lot and in, in and out of the hospital. But she made that decision, and I think also it was part of that women's empowerment. But So she didn't change her eyebrows at all. And she's known for her the eyebrow that goes all the way across her face. So you have to, if you do a Frida Kahlo eyebrow, that's what makes her Frida Kahlo. Everybody will know she's Frida Kahlo with her unibrow. And of course I dressed her as well in her shirt. So how to start with this. Oh, actually, no, I'm gonna show you how to start with this. So to do a face, you guys all know, I'm sure by now, that a face starts as, as an oval. And it needs to be the right size to fit on uh, properly on your uh, toilet paper tube. If it's this size, that's going to look kind of silly, isn't it? Once you do that, you want to have, um, I like almond eyes. I know some of you guys like cutie eyes or what, what are the other, what's the other way, um, like manga eyes or what have you. For a nose, all you need to do is a little L or a backwards L. And lips are, you know what I t teach you, you've got a bridge and a, and a ditch, right? So you've got a bridge and a ditch. And you've got a nice face going there. And of course, you need to do her unibrow, right? There she is, Frida, okay? If you don't want to do Frida Kahlo and you just want to do yourself maybe or your mother and your father or your uh, baby sister or your big brother or whatever, you can do that too. Once you've got this, you're going to cut it out. You're going to glue it down. Oh, and you can see I used marker on mine. I would encourage you to do color too because I think that's an really kind of what finishes things off. And you've got your hair. Now, hair. Let's talk about hair. Because hair can be many different things. You could use twine if you want twine or yarn or actually this is this kind of rope or twine is a little maybe a little better and you if you glue it and you put enough glue on there then you can um, have it sit well. Maybe you can just have I don't know it, it doesn't have to be permanent you can take this apart when you're done but just stuff it down inside and you've got crazy hair, right? How about toilet paper? Why not, right? You can fluff it up, stuff it down inside. Oh, and look, you've got a pretty good hairdo. If you wanted to change the color of this, all you need to do is 
either use marker or paint or whatever if whatever you have at home and this kind of makes fun hair too doesn't it uh, I've got some thread or yarn that might work as well so um, oh and cotton I don't have cotton balls at home but I do have these and these don't work very well but I just want you to imagine using cotton balls and maybe you have cotton balls at home okay so a ribbon a paper even you could just take and uh, old books or maybe newspaper and shred it and stick it in so many different things you can do for your hair okay so we've got hair clothes let's um, I did a um, white piece of paper and drew a neck sleeves there you go you got your arm sleeves and I also then drew that the the base or the body of the uh, shirt or dress or whatever it was Maybe you want to put lace on there. You, I went very simple, but you could uh, really uh, doll this up. You could cut out a separate piece for a um, uh, lace around the inside. You could even do this using gluing down lace or fabric or whatever you might have at home. Actually, fabric is a really good idea. And then, of course, I colored everything and put a nice little design in there she's got flowers on this dress of, in that picture i also uh, kind of looked at a, a i googled her and made sure i had a picture in front of me so i knew what she looked like or what the details were and then i'm going to cut this out and glue it down got her earrings there I personally, you could use glue stick. I personally like this Elmer's glue, but glue stick works really well as um, too. I, but you're going to have to kind of rub it a little bit and make sure it stays down uh, firmly. Okay, so there's my person or my Frida Kahlo toilet paper puppet or doll or whatever you want to call it. I also made an animal for you. Okay, to show you how to make an animal like this. Okay, pretty much the same thing. The only difference was that, and actually I have two different kinds of toilet paper rolls. I have uh, white, which uh, didn't work quite so well, and then I have brown, because we don't want too much white. So I, I used the brown for Frida here, and I used the white for my animal and uh, it lended itself nicely for my animal because then I took my paint and simply painted, I'm making an orange fox. So I painted my toilet paper roll orange since I had a nice white base, okay? And I thought that worked pretty well. After I painted my base here. I had to let, let it dry because you can't glue onto wet and it was fairly wet. So I, and then I also painted onto my white piece of paper. Okay. You could, you can see I have my orange paper here, construction paper. You could use orange construction paper if you want. I kind of like the white because it, um, when you paint it, it gets a variety of colors or shades of colors. You've got some places that are light, you've got some places that are dark, and that kind of helps with it. Now, I didn't paint this with my watercolors. Um, I want to re remind you that you can paint with your markers. If you want to just do, uh, just marker your white paper, you're welcome to do that too. But I did my marker, then I added water to it and moved my watercolor marker around. Of course, I can't do this with Sharpie, can I? But I moved my watercolor around and let it dry again. Now I can cut that out, okay? 
and I could make it a fox tail. Here's his face, and I've got two ears, okay? And I did leave, actually I cut the tail out and I then painted it afterwards because I wanted to leave that white tip, okay? And the face too, I painted, or I cut it out, actually I drew it, then I put where I wanted the orange, and I added a little bit of water to that to uh, use as paint, okay? You can use watercolor if you want to use watercolor. Everything's got to dry, and then you can cut it out, and we'll talk about gluing it down. Now let's talk about drawing a fox face or any kind of an animal face. You have to remember that animals have snouts. They don't have a singular nose and a singular mouth and all of that. It's all one piece and you need to show that like this. And the snout kind of comes from the eyes and up into the forehead. If you have a dog or cat or any kind of an animal or you can look online and, and um, look at a picture and see it. You'll notice that they all have, it's almost like a tube where everything sits inside. You need to show the nose there as well, and noses are usually dark brown or black or what have you. And then you're gonna have your eyes that come out off underneath that forehead, okay? Um, I also liked to show a little bit of fur up on top by having those rough edges, and you can see that on my when I cut out my fox here. Uh, so gluing it down, I now have my, everything's dry. I'm going to take my Elmer's, put a drop of glue, and, and again, you can see where I need to rub this and make sure it is on there really good. And I'm just going to have it more just at, almost at the very top because I need to put my ears up here, don't I? Okay. My ears, I've left a little tab or a little flap for it to go behind See how I, if, as I push it down, I think I need a little more glue over here. I'm just going to add a little more glue. Oh, isn't he cute? He's so cute. And I thought he needed a tail, and I want a tail behind him. Okay. Oh, he's adorable. I really like him. And my tail, I'm going to have my tail just... probably put some paws here too, right? So I'm going to do in the orange that I already have here. How am I going to do paws? Uh, there, like that. And I got to cut these out. I think these are actually, they might be a little small, but I'm going to go for it. You can see I made my made it a lot easier for myself to cut out by just cutting a little bit of a, a square and then cut them out. That makes it a lot easier for me to maneuver through this paper. You'll also notice that while I'm cutting, I'm turning and moving the scissor, excuse me, not the scissor, the paper rather than the scissor and my scissor is just going up and down as my paper is turning where I want it to cut. Okay, I've got my paws here. Do one down there. Oh, he's pretty adorable, isn't he? 
I like him. There's my fox. So that's how you can make uh, toilet paper roll dolls. Um, I would love to see what you uh, come together with and uh, put, I'm not put together. I'm not seeing a lot of people posting and I would love to see the examples that you have and uh, what you're accomplishing through all of this. And next time we meet, we're going to be talking about this guy right here. And he is an interesting fellow. So I hope that you join us for our art class next time. And uh, if you know who this is, I would, uh, I, maybe you can do a little bit of investigating. But um, this is who we're going to talk about next time. And you'll notice that he is tall. I used a, a, a paper towel roll for this guy because he was tall and skinny and in real life this guy was and he was um, very eccentric so join me next time to learn about this guy right here and uh, i hope that you enjoy doing something with your toilet paper rolls uh, take care stay safe and i look forward to seeing you next time